For this last tutorial, there really isn't a whole lot of new information, but I do want to cover some miscellaneous things that I haven't either talked about or that I'd like to just show you in general. So, first of all, I figured out what was happening with that use physics and why it was freaking out. If we prune this backdrop here, for whatever reason, this backdrop was causing things to freak out. So, I do a prune right there. S for select, let's highlight that cauldron, T for transform, check use physics. It's going to think about this for a second. And then what you'll find is that it will work as you expect it to. Now, why it's doing that, I'm not entirely sure. It might have to do with the way things are figured out when this goes to do collisions. But as you can see, it's now going upwards in the way it should, it makes contact with the table, and it's totally awesome. So, I do want to just point that out. Also, when it comes to selecting different variants on these assets, I figured that out as well. Towards the top here, we have different options for selecting things based on their kind. So, if I go and, let's say, select this, that means actually select the group within the scene graph tree whenever I select something. So whenever I have that cauldron, as you can see, the thing that's highlighted is the group. If I was to do something over here, like let's say the components, which I believe is that guy, when I go to select this cauldron, what you'll find is that we are now selecting the components, specifically this. So that's pretty cool. When you have this component selected and you right click, now we have the ability to change out whatever variant that is, and it creates a set variant automatically for us. That was pointed out by Avengia. I think I said that right. Hopefully I did <laughs> in the YouTube comments. So thank you very much for finding that out and letting me know about it. And then also, what else do we have up here? We can select geometry. If you want to just select lights, you have all kinds of cool selection options up here like I just mentioned. Uh, what else? Okay, well, I don't think I told you guys this yet, but it's a good thing to know about. With the sublayers, and I'm just gonna, I'm going to uh, just jump around different topics here. With the sublayer, let's say I load in something for effects. So let's just go to library, effects, and let's say we bring in the RBD sim. So as we go through the frames, this is the effects layer, effects department layer, which has that. Well, what's cool is that in this scene graph layers panel, right here, where all of our layers are, we can mute any layers that are being loaded in from disk. So if I want to mute, well, not that one, but let's just say the effects layer. I can do that. And as you can see, it's now been muted. So that's very convenient if, you know, let's say you have lights as its own sublayer from the layout department or something like that, you can quickly mute it in here. Depending on how your pipeline is set up, this might be a pretty extensive list or this might be pretty short. But just so you know, it's there and you can use that. Also, we have some very convenient visibility viewport options here. Sometimes whenever you select a bunch of things, everything kind of goes yellow in this view finder. If you don't want that to be the case, you can go like that and that will clear that up. Same deal if you don't want to see your camera or your lights. You have some options here that allow you to decide what your viewport is going to do. So just kind of one of those minor things, but I thought I should mention that. Down here we also have these icons which allow us some convenient options when just working in general. So let's say that there's some sort of tree expansion here that you go to quite a bit. So let's say that for whatever reason, I just, I work on these baskets a lot. I don't know why, but <laughs> let's pretend that I'm in this tree view quite a bit. Well, I can go here and I could say save tree expansion. And I can call this the baskets underscore expand. And so maybe, you know, I, I go and I work on some lighting stuff and this all changes. The nice thing is that I can now go here and say basket expand. And as you can see, it's now saved that particular layout for convenience sake. 
So that's nice. These other two things also do the same thing, except in this case, this relates to viewport overrides. So let's say that for the lights, I don't want any lights showing up from layout. So maybe I'll just go like that, okay? And this is a nice preset to have. So I'll say, save viewport override. We'll say no underscore layout lights. And now, as you can imagine, I can do the same thing. And it saves specifically the way in which I toggle things in this save, in this scene graph tree right here. So there you go. That's another thing. Lastly, this relates to masks. And so what the heck is that? This relates to exactly what I was just talking about before with the ability to mute sublayers. So let's say that I don't want the cauldron effects, smoke, you know, stuff going on. I can now say save viewport load masks and call it whatever I want. So I'll say no cauldron effects, please. And then I could do whatever I want. Now I can just load that preset and there we go. Also, there's a few other options in here. If you want to mute a bunch of layers at the same time, you can select, you know, a bunch of stuff, do that. I mean, it's kind of the same thing as going over here. So just another way to get there. And then you can also reset all your masks right there. It's kind of nice. And this load all payloads is kind of interesting. So if I uncheck that, then you'll realize that I don't have any payloads anymore. So remember way back when, when we had this SOP import going on and we have this load as reference? Well, that load as reference is saying, do you want to bring in the object as a payload, which is basically just, you know, the objects we've been using here the entire time, or do you want to bring that in as a sublayer? You pretty much always want to bring in things from SOPs as a reference, in other words, as a payload. So you always want to check that. And uh, one reason why you might decide to not load all these payloads is if you had to do a bunch of work on these layers and you don't want your viewport updating anytime you make some changes. So that, that could be one example of why you might decide to use that. But anyway, that's what that's talking about. And those are some various details about LOPs. And this now brings us to the end of the course. I hope that you've enjoyed learning about Solaris and LOPs and some of the new features that are part of Houdini 18. It's a little bit rough getting started with this stuff, but hopefully by now you at least feel more comfortable and confident about what you're doing. If you'd like to support my teaching, be sure to visit cgforge.com. This is where I'm placing all my tutorials. And on top of that, in the near future, I'll be doing some more look dev stuff for lighting, texturing. I'll be adding more blogs, hopefully other instructors as well. And so there's a lot of fun stuff on the horizon. Thanks for watching. And until next time, have a great day.